Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode of The Good, The Scars and Rugby in partnership as ever with our pals at Allianz. We're really trying to keep it professional but we have the giggles right at the start of the show this week. Um, a huge weekend in the women's Six Nations. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a debrief and analysis uh, s- straight from the England camp. Uh, we've got the only ever player to go straight from water carrier to starting at nine and then getting player of the match all in one foul swoop, Natasha Hunt and her sidekick, Emily, who managed to drop <laughs> down as Zoe Harrison Grubber with her first touch of the ball. Ridiculous. Uh, just like your matching outfits. Hi. <laughs> Can I just jump in with the and your sidekick, Emily? I'm all for that. I'm all for that. She's waiting her entire life for that line. <laughs> Why so are you good. sharing your phones? <laughs> because we're obviously we're roommates, <laughs> and Shy. I'm gonna blame Shira. Shira said, "Be on the same computer and share earphones, headphones, because it's a better connection." You know, I just do as I'm told. So here we are. I did literal dumb and dumber. The Chuckle Brothers, whatever you want to call us, we're here today. <laughs> I did question Alma, but you know, Skaz always pulls rank. So here we are. So are you two roommates now? Yeah. <laughs> it's so been a earlier, day earlier in the week when you were doing the nick and mo show um in the same room that the two of you now share what is emily doing in the background nothing she made herself scarce <laughs> even though rugby fans probably would have wanted to see her not me i had a quick conversation with nick said hello and then i literally got booted out mo was like we're live at That's half past six such... we're live at half past six so you oh. need to be out of the room and if dinner's stopped serving by then, can you plate me some up? <laughs> no, that's not how it happened. Dinner was at house six and Skaz was going, and I said, if I'm not out, please will you plate me some food up? But it's been a day. We're starting to um we're starting to get on each other's nerves, I think. Well more I'm getting on Skaz's, but it's okay, we're dealing with it. We're moving. We're fine, we're fine. <laughs> Last week, there was a lot of chat about the coach trip that took nine million years and a half all the way to Scotland. This week, you guys got to fly to Italy. Give us a rating of the journey. Um, I'd go five and a half. Yeah, it's, it's pretty low. <laughs> it's quite low. It took us basically a whole day to get out there and a whole day to get back. Um, and I don't know about you, but it's the first time I've been in a domestic airport again and oh. I didn't I didn't enjoy it and I'm going to sound like a proper I don't know whatever word we're going to use Diva. but you know, yeah basically there's just a lot of people you know how impatient people are as soon as we've landed they're up getting their bags out of the thing and it's like things are falling on your head oh, I just didn't enjoy it I didn't enjoy it but we're we're back and we're back in Bisham and everyone's still alive so <laughs> oh yeah. someone's at the door go see who it is <laughs> Bring them Sorry. in. They Bring have to now be on the show. Like, they have no choice. This is, this is no saying the matter. Life. <laughs> so, like, come and say hello. We just, so I like, just made Mo jump at the door. It's England captain, 338 cats. Hi. <laughs> what are you stopping by? Are, are you just oh, joining the show? <laughs> She's leaving. She's shy now. <laughs> I think we're all a little bit delirious. That's what's happened. So Sarah Hunter's just popping by to drop off. What was that? A t-shirt, a t-shirt for me. Yeah. Okay. She's a good egg. She's got a spare one. My my kind of size. So some of my kits are a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I've I've not quite got stuff that properly fits me yet. So the girls are looking out for me, basically. Two two or three weeks into camp, kit becomes like proper lottery. So you put it in the wash. What you get back out is rarely what you put in. It's all over the shop. It's potentially two sizes bigger, three sizes smaller. So at this point, you just take whatever you can get, literally. Who loses their rag with kit lottery the most? <laughs> oh, that's such a oh, good question. That is a great question. So Lark Davies, bless her, she's lost two t-shirts and some underwear, but she's she's just like, guys, <laughs> could you just can you just check your labels? Like, she's really polite she's lush bless her and then some people are like i label my socks <laughs> <laughs> i label my socks, my socks it's not even who loses their rag it's like 
the like carnage that unfolds as soon yeah. as the kit gets dropped back so we we had it dropped back just before like our toughest session of the week last week and everyone was like yeah leave it till after the session leave it till after the session and then like one person starts rummaging and it was like boom, like everyone in just trying to find their stuff the thing is we so we put them on like laundry loops <laughs> so you you label a laundry loop and you attach everything to this loop or you have this netted bag that you put your your underwear in it's got your name on it scars give it to the laundrette they decide for whatever reason they're like oh what are these all these things on these loops take everything off empty all of the bags <laughs> so then you just arrives back there's like 100 pairs of knickers just strewn <laughs> over the floor it's like sports bras everywhere oh. it's honestly carnage it's so funny it's not and funny. then it's like and then it's like a zombie feeding frenzy where everyone's like this is mine <laughs> It yeah. was mental. It was mental. And then, like, naturally, we all have, like, similar sports bras. So then, like, a couple of days later, you'll be like, is this anyone's sports bra? I picked it up by accident. Sorry, this one's mine. Like, yeah, it's just... I did that last week. I picked one I thought it was mine, then got changed and realised I was actually wearing the one that I'd picked up, so that wasn't <laughs> mine. It's just, yeah, it's something else. It's funny, though. It's funny. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> camp life. <laughs> camp life, in a nutshell, just fighting over sport bras. Okay, so who's yeah. the early riser between the two of you? We're quite similar. We're quite well matched, Skaz and I, which works as roomies. So, like, both of us... Skaz makes me um, go and shower first because she likes to have that extra little bit of time in bed. That's about it, really. Skaz so doesn't make Mo, Mo do anything. <laughs> what, what happens is Mo, je, Mo just takes longer to get ready. So we chuck her in the shower first so that she can start the process while I'm showering. And then we pretty much arrive at the finish line together. It's all about having a routine and sticking to the routine with our Emily. So yeah, we work well. We've got the routine down. So the signature on top of the hair, head bun that looks disheveled, does that take a long time? <laughs> It actually does. It actually does. My hair is so thin that the amount of dry shampoo that needs to go through it to make it look presentable each day is not okay. So it takes longer than you would imagine, actually, to get this look. And sometimes we have to redo the look because the dishevelled just isn't quite doing it just right. So, <laughs> so you need to turn up the dishevelledness oh, just goodness, a little yeah. extra. Yeah, like the height is important. Do you know what I mean? Like just sometimes, yeah. I really thought it was just like a like. No, it is. I'm joking. (laughs) I'm joking. But dry shampoo does get it. Dry shampoo does get it. That would be like the one sponsor if I could ever have in my life. Like that's the one because I spend so much money on it. Do you know the dry shampoo that I used in South Africa? They stopped making then. When I moved here, it was here again. And I literally made a video for my sister because we share <laughs> the same obsession because we also have both have very fine hair. So I would like to tell anyone who's listening and who thinks that that's a frivolous thing uh, to just sit down because people with fine hair need dry shampoo, not because they, they don't want to wash their hair for extra texture and volume. Honestly, it's killer. I'm like... Everyone picks me up on it because I'll wash my hair the night before and then in the morning I need to dry shampoo and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, honestly, it looks greasy. So thin. But anyway. So no karaoke on the plane then? You didn't treat anyone else on the plane to a little... It wasn't on the plane, was it? No. We did it on the bus on the way back from... So from Heathrow back to Bisham Abbey, the girls did a... Riff off. Riff off. You know, like, have you seen Pitch Perfect? (laughs) Oh my <laughs> it was did I say it did I say that like my nan would yeah, say that she's like oh, what, what's that called again a uh, riff off <laughs> sorry people do this in real life <laughs> yeah apparently no, not really but I think we're all just a little bit delirious it's been a long like yeah. a long week together we're all loving it don't get me wrong but I think it's now getting very entertaining, but it was good fun. Like the girls, they, they just started it. Like the young girls are enjoying the karaoke at the minute. So Ellie Kilder and Connie Powell, the likes of those, Maud Muir. Yeah. yeah. Sadia. Sadia's a little bit in on it. Shauna Brown was in on it last night. So yeah, they started this riff off on the bus and then everyone got involved, which was actually very amusing. Some people Brilliant. were quite good. <clears throat> Rosie Galligan was very good. Rosie Galligan, dark horse. She was like, so there's a group of them like over six chairs either side or whatever. And Rosie was couple back. But, you know, so she didn't want to be in it, but she was very much in it. So she was the one that was like spitting in the the next song because she'd heard a word that I don't really understand how it works, but how it made sense. And then she'd be the one coming up with all the songs. Yeah. 
which is very good actually. Wow. It sounds yeah. like someone should be filming these. Have you got the <laughs> microphone with you? No, no, oh my God, no, I haven't. I did mean, do you know what? I meant to bring it and I totally forgot. I've got oh. this um, microphone that featured on the last podcast. It's like a proper karaoke microphone. To sing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do what you want with it. You can podcast with it. You can sing with it. We need to get that in camp. Yeah. It's completely cordless and I'm really disappointed in you. <laughs> I was really amped for whatever that microphone did over the last week. I just kept on thinking that microphone is having a crazy <laughs> time life. out in Italy. <laughs> I mean, look at the score line. <laughs> yeah. So, um, a morale booster outside of the, the riff off. Anything else uh, going big? Bit of bingo? Uh, no, tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk's been a strong feature. Um, it's up, I think we featured it before. Who talked about it? Jazz Joyce, maybe? Yeah. Should we add her on? Um, it's basically a board game. Have you got it? It's basically yeah. a board game. Moe's made it with her own fair hands. It's got magnets in it. You play it a bit like a game called Frustration that we play in England. I don't know if you probably ever come across it. But she's made it herself, painted it herself. It's so precious about it. <laughs> Go on, show us. Come on. I needed to hear your reaction, just in case. I love the handiness, yeah. I love the fact that you got oh, wow. Then, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah. So then it comes together and creates a board. But if you want to include more people, is that way it's expandable even. Yeah, when so it's a six you... player. Oh my goodness! When do you have time for this? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone. What? Cut that bit out. It's gone. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a great game, actually. So in the little bits of downtime, um, gets quite competitive. Vicky Fleetwood played it for the first time. There's quite a lot of rules to it. So you play it with cards, which dictate how far you can move, what you're able to do, etc. Vicky Fleetwood played it for the first time and dropped some um, expletives pretty early doors because she was oh. getting a bit too competitive about the situation. But it's good fun. She enjoyed it. Okay. Well, yeah. speaking of good fun and enjoying things... How is that? Just coming onto the pitch and scoring a try, boof. Like, it literally, it isn't even a thing for you? Is it that easy? <laughs> no, I was a bit embarrassed to tell you the truth because <clears throat> you get so much stick if you literally come on and score with your first touch. Sarah Byrne did it, obviously, but she at least ran in 50 metres to do so and handed a yeah. few people off. I literally yeah. just had to catch and flop. So, yeah, I was probably a little bit embarrassed, but it's always nice. Great kick from Zoe. When I went back to her, I was like, great kick, Zoe. She was like, yeah, that was all me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Katie Daly McLean actually did say on commentary, um, no doubt she would have demanded that from Zoe Harrison. It's the type of girl she is. Did you hear that? Did you see it? Did you watch it back? I, I've watched it back, but I haven't um, watched it with commentary yet. Um, but that doesn't surprise me at all. I'm glad Katie's p painting me in a good light. <laughs> It's what you need from your friends, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, so you played the last 15 minutes only. What's up with that? Well, we were just uh, on the bench, just chilling out, enjoying the... Taking it all in, enjoying the girls, killing it. Go on, Mo's got a point you know to what? make. It's actually made me so happy because we were... What, can you remember your stats? Basically, we were looking at how many times Emily's played for England. I don't know why I called you Emily. Oh, Scazzy's really, played yeah. for England. Yeah, um and the amount of time she's been on the bench and I think it was something like seven or eight and honestly as a nine obviously there's a fair bit of rotation you come off the bench a fair bit personally I've come off the bench a fair bit and the warm-ups are killer and not only the warm-ups the post-match fitness is killer oh. and so for Emily to experience that I was very happy with it although they let her off the fitness I was fuming I was gutted yeah I know I know me and Sarah Hunter we um, got grandfather rights basically um, because we were the only two subs that didn't play long enough and Alex Martin took pity on us, I think, because we're both a little older, got a few tendon issues going on. He was like, no, guys, you're you're all right. It's outrageous right. behaviour. Don't need to see this one. But Skaz wow. after the game was like, oh, those warm-ups are killer. Because <laughs> she's never had to do them. <laughs> you're like, welcome. That's how it goes. <laughs> welcome to the real world. Yeah, but, so you, but you seem to have... Um, what did Katie Daly McLean call them? Uh, fresh scazzy legs uh, when you ca came on. So obviously that warm up was uh, was worth it. Um, yeah, it did some little little assist there for Lydia Thompson as well. Gosh, what a run yes. out for her! 
She's on fire, isn't she? So good. What those stats that came out last night? Forty-one tries in fifty-one, 51 games. Unreal numbers. Like that is ridiculous. Yeah, she's it's so good to see her back playing. Obviously, she's had a, a lots of struggles with injuries over her career, but she's um she's an unbelievable athlete. Like I think the first time she got the ball, there was Italians all around her. She just bumped through one, kept leg driving, and she just like reappears the other side of this contact. She's a phenomenal athlete and one of the best humans as well, isn't she? Oh. So it's so nice to see her go well. Oh, brilliant. Now, speaking of people going well, um, Mo, how was that return? Because it felt like there was so much talk around you starting um, at the end of last week. And I, I, I was kind of wondering, I was like, oh, I wonder if this feels like pressure. But you just did. You just went out there and like looked like you were absolutely in your element. Yeah, I loved it. Like the the one thing they said was um they just want tempo in the game and that's obviously something that I try and do the whole time, like live for it. I absolutely love it. Um so yeah, I think like for me I didn't feel much pressure. I think Tins was the only pressure I felt because he messaged me being like, No no pressure, but you're in my fantasy team, so make sure you don't let me down or something like that. And I was like, I had it hadn't even crossed my mind, stuff like that. So that was probably the only bit of pressure, but it was only a split second. Um and yeah, just amazing to be back out there, like I think, yeah, just just amazing to be back with the girls, back in the shirt and, and running around with a smile on the face. So can't complain. He takes so, the fantasy league pretty serious, doesn't he? Oh, gosh. Like, <laughs> it is. Well, I mean, the level of competitiveness there is deep. And you know what? I was actually thinking about our predictions last week, but we'll get to our predictions in a bit. Um, I just want to go back to the fact that you got a montage uh, for your water carrier <laughs> duties do you get a montage when you're player of the match as well or not <laughs> I don't think so I don't know um Liam our cameraman behind the scenes he's, he's just ace and he's just capturing like all different bits like obviously O2 inside line and all that jazz um and he said to me after the game he was like oh I've got a few bits of you like running water do you find, do you want them and I was like yeah of course like yeah that would be cool and um <laughs> he was like I was like unless you're going to put it out because if you put it out I'll just let England put it out first and when I got it I was like I'm not sure this is for my like for my socials. Like, I'm just a little bit awkward about it. Um, but no, it's amazing. Um, I don't. I'm not going to ask for anything again. I think. Um, I think he's done his work with me. So we'll, we'll let that be. <laughs> well, we loved it. Absolutely loved it. I was wondering because you were deep within the uh, encouragement and motivational talks when you were doing the water carrying. Um, and you you talk now about kind of playing off the bench and then coming on when when you go off. Um, when you get subbed off and Lucy Packer comes on, what do you say when you cross uh, each other on the pitch? Is there like a, a, a signature kind of Mohunt pep talk happening in, in passing? <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, probably just like a little bit of positivity to, um, to whoever's coming on to replace me, but also anything that needs to be said in that moment. So normally as you come on, you'll be like, any messages like what what is it what's going on um so for us the breakdown was a bit of a mess um so it was just basically trying to help her through that and then just go well type thing but yeah nothing nothing too stressful nothing too strenuous but anything that's in the moment and then just a little bit of a you got this let's go depends how much breath you've got left isn't it yeah <laughs> at that point so often just before you get served you normally absolutely die and so he's like <sighs> let's give him a high five if you get a high five they're lucky just go, yeah. Just Did you get any messages when you came on? Did I? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. I think, obviously, at that point, the game was reasonably well done, wasn't it? Mm. So it was just mm. about kind of, yeah, seeing how many more we could get on the board, I suppose, and see how clinical we could be and all those buzzwords that we always talk about. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun 15 minutes. Not sure I, not sure I earned my dinner, but it was, it was all right. You it's interesting so much <laughs> cut that bit <laughs> what was that <laughs> joking i said you would she said i'm not sure i ate my dinner i said you would have if you didn't eat so much <laughs> i was joking i was joking i was joking. shots fired shots Sorry. fired so italy zero england 74 um, mid Simon Middleton, the coach, said afterwards, to be fair, I wouldn't say they're an uncompetitive team. I thought they were outstanding today. Um, and then said he thought your physical effort was so intense that it probably made the opposition look ordinary, and they're not. Uh, talk to us about that. 
Yeah, like Italy are, are a good side. They've got some very good players. They've come on a hell of a lot over the last few years. But I think something that we've been drilling and obviously the girls that, that started the game and certainly that first 20 minutes or so, just try and rip in and get tempo as much as possible and do things as fast as we can um, and just continue to, to kind of, I guess, run the other team. Um we work a hell of a lot on our kind of physical conditioning and ability to keep the ball in play for as long as possible and all that sort of stuff. And obviously it's not always in your control, but when it is, you, you try and make the most of it um, and obviously be clinical when you have opportunities. And the girls did that really, really well to start with. I think that first try, obviously the girls are going well in the driving line out. Mo sees a um, massive gap on the short side, hits Sarah McKenna and she goes in and touches it. Things like that. Are, it's that tempo, it's that intensity, but then it's also like smart decision making as well. Um, and then it, and then sometimes it's hard once you're two, three, four up to then continue that and kind of not keep the motivation, but keep your foot on the gas, if you like. Um, and again, the girls did that really, really well. We talk loads about not to be too boring, but we talk loads about kind of comparing ourselves against us and continuing to kind of challenge our own bar. Um, and I think, yeah, sometimes it's easy to, to knock off that. But yeah, it did really well. It was Jeez, brutal, though. Like honestly, yeah, it was it was brutal out there. Like I think um, we knew that that was the thing that we were trying to do, like in terms of the tempo and keep driving it. And obviously, as a nine, you're pretty integral in that. Um, but it's, at sometimes it was like almost sevens feeling where you're just absolutely <laughs> knackered. Yeah, genuine, you're absolutely knackered. But you have to keep going, and you know that like you're tired, but they're probably worse. So it's just that like motivation to keep moving and keep running. Um, but yeah, it was it was super tiring that first like. 30 minutes was was really brutal and I think you could just tell sometimes when the ball stopped they were just bodies like strewn all over the field um especially like from an Italian point of view which kind of made uh, give us a little lift like we're doing our job like we just need to stay on it now um but yeah because they did initially have quite a bit of success disrupting kind of turning over it wasn't I mean the score now seems like it was one-way traffic but at least in the beginning there was a bit of kind of quite formidable uh, working around tiny little bits from from Italy. Oh yeah, absolutely. We had like loads of check-ins on pitch about um how we were breaking them down because it didn't feel like we were we were getting the outcomes that we wanted. Like they were shot like hitting hitting us behind the game line, they were putting shots in left, right and center. The breakdown, they were coming after everything. Like it was so difficult there. Um and we didn't deal with that necessarily that well, I don't think in the first like definitely 15 minutes um just trying to find our feet with our running lines and and that breakdown element but yeah they they were they put up a massive fight and I think as you mentioned like the scoreline it never does reflect it I think it, everyone always says it but it's not it is it is that case um they they were super physical like the contacts were brutal and yeah like it, it was difficult to actually find a way to actually keep breaking them down and keep moving and I think that's the beauty of this England team though is that when one thing doesn't work, we went to something else. And, and that was something that pleased Mids um, a lot after the game was that the nature of some of our tries and some of our ball play and how we moved them around the field, the variation in our attack was something that we've been working on. And it, it actually came to fruition, which is super pleasing. The stats at 66 minutes when you came on, Emily, the metres made was 1,041 for England. Was it? Oh, my goodness. Wow. That is insane. <laughs> that is insane. I think when you come on as a sub, obviously, dependent on the context of the game, if it's a tight game, there's obviously pressure to do something and, you know, potentially go on and win the game. But when it's been a game like that, there's also a pressure to basically not be the one that comes onto the field and is rubbish, which is <laughs> which is like, it. I guess it's completely different mindset. So for Sarah Hunter and I to trudge on. Actually, we got a message. So it was Sarah Hunter and I left on the bench and the message came down to our manager from mids, get the old girls on then. I suppose it's time for them. Really? Yeah. I and wondered ha- what was saying because I saw you <laughs> laugh on the way. And back. Harriet, our manager, said, Scout said, oh, you're off to warm up. Mids has just said, get the old girls on then. They could go have a run now. <laughs> I thought, the cheek of the devil. <laughs> it's nuts. And you were like, it? I'll show him. I'll score yeah. on the first touch of the ball. <laughs> It's crazy. Like, imagine being Italians and being down that much and then seeing 230 caps walk onto the field in Sarah Hunter and Emily Scarrett. Like, I was sat on the bench just like, I can't believe it. It's the, like, these two are our bench just left. Like, it's unbelievable. Um, 
yeah, such is the strength and depth at the minute, I guess. Brilliant, brilliant. And and um, Italy made 200 tackles. So spare a thought for the bodies on that side because uh, they've also got a match this weekend. Um, but they've obviously shown uh, immense commitment in racking up a number like that. Um, they they really defended hard. They always do. They have such good heart in their defensive mm. effort. Um, you know, they'll. I think some of the pictures that you see, perhaps where we've got a bit of space on the edge, and then there's five de- uh, Italian defenders that are tracking back across the field to to try and make that tackle. Their work rate is immense. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of sore bodies this morning. Um, but yeah, obviously wishing them well for the rest of their campaign as well. They're, yeah, they're definitely a, a better side than perhaps that um, that scoreline reflects. So Zoe Harrison kicked in the first half and then Helena Rowland in the second. Why that change over half time? Is this part of this rotational strategy of kind of giving everyone a fair go? What's the thinking? It's a good question. I don't actually know the answer. I think um, Zoe was struggling a little bit with... She's been struggling with a few bits, but I think she took a knock in that first half. So I think it was probably one of those things where actually there's, there's no need for me to, to push this any further. Helena's obviously a very good and accomplished kicker herself, so give her a shot. But um, yeah, obviously I think Zoe was kicking pretty well in that first half, so I don't think it was anything to do with that. I think it was more a case of kind of her bit of self-preservation and just like, actually, <laughs> you can take over that bit because it is quite a strain on the body sometimes kicking, um, especially if you've got a little niggle somewhere. So yeah. The um, the chat around Poppy Cleal, um, second time out as captain for her. Um, we know her as someone who's quite outspoken and has strong opinions, often very well informed on social media. What is she like as a captain? Yeah, yeah, she's um, she's brilliant. Obviously, my first experience of it. Um, she's just a natural leader, like the way that she plays. You've got certain captains, you've got people that will talk um a good game and and, uh, people that like kind of galvanize the team with what they say and then you've got people that you just follow actions and she's definitely one of those that you know that you're going to get everything from her on the pitch every every tackle every run everything she does is at 110 percent, and she's out there to do her best and she's a brilliant person to follow in terms of that regard and like she always raises standards in training i think everyone's she's very well respected across the squad because of because of that I don't know whether she'll appreciate me for telling this story or not, but it really tickled me. (laughs) So basically, obviously, we've had a huddle and they'll say, she'll be saying the bits, getting everybody riled up. And then we do like an England on three. So she's like, England on three. And then she goes, three, two, one. (laughs) So actually, it's it's England on one. But it really tickled me. (laughs) And it was just really funny. Obviously, it wasn't the moment to laugh about it. And it was just like, yeah, well, off we go. But it was really funny. Oh, no. um, I've been taking the mick out of her for it since. It's, it's Bless her on. though. Like before the game, she actually questioned us in the strap meeting. So we have a little <laughs> check in with like, there's certain players on the pitch that you like actually check in with about just how we run the game plan and go through. So she checked in at that strap meeting and was like, guys, what is it? Is it England on England three, England on one? And they were like, it doesn't matter, but you just count down or you count up. Like it doesn't matter which way you do it. And then she did it in the warm up, did it wrong, did it just before we went out um for the match and did it wrong but then it just became like a bit of a thing so yeah bless her i think that'll be her new thing now she's got to stick with it don't correct it stick with it yeah, it yeah. england on whatever number comes last now um we have to talk about wales scotland over the weekend because it was just such a thriller of a match and I said we're going to talk about predictions because last week when we spoke about this, I'm almost sure uh, Mike and I both went for Scotland, right? I think so, yeah. I think I gave them a nudge as well. You said Wales. Oh, did I? Oh, yes. Oh, it doesn't sound like me. Um, you predicted um, it. Did I? I, yeah. I thought I would have backed Scotland. Yeah, it was. So we watched the game because it was obviously the day before ours. Um, and we actually said at the time, because it was just before our shirt presentation, the end of the game. So we were all in the team meeting room in our polos, sat on our chairs and we were watching the end of the game. And obviously it was really tight, wasn't it? Tense. Um, little moments could have made huge differences. And I, we, a few of us said at the time, we were like, imagine if we were being goggle boxed right now and then they watched it back. Because obviously we were all like, oh, ah, ah, ah. I'm sorry, but all, all over the place with all the different things that were going on. Um, but yeah, really, really tight finish. Obviously, feel for the Scots. Obviously, I know 
a lot of the Scots much better than I know a lot of the Welsh. You probably know a lot of the Welsh better, so to Gloucester. But yeah, great game though. That's what we want, isn't it? We, you you want games like that to to kind of really get some um, engagement and some jeopardy in the in the Six Nations, I suppose. Yeah, I love it's Maggie Alfonsi. I love Maggie Alfonsi dubbing them the comeback queens. I think on on commentary it was brilliant. Th- oh yes, yes, it was her. Um, that must have been um, so cool for you, Mo, to see people that you know so well score a, a big win like that. Yeah, definitely. Like they're great girls. So ten of the um, girls in the match day squad actually play at Gloucester Hartley with me. So to see them get that result is just amazing. And obviously knowing what it means to them playing down in Cardiff and. It's a tiny little country, isn't it? Like the the passion that they have for rugby down there is something else, and yeah, to see them get over like that was was pretty special. It sets it up as well, doesn't it? Because mm-hmm. now we're going two unbeaten teams going at each other this weekend um, at at a really good. Well, you speak about Kings Home, Mo. Kings Home, the home. No, it's just it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because it's so close to Wales, obviously as well. Um, and like they've sold so many tickets, like it's set to be a really amazing atmosphere there. And I just hope that everyone comes in and, and gives the gives the girls, whoever takes the field, like the recognition that they deserve. Because like you said, it's two unbeaten teams going at it in the Six Nations. And there's always that England-Wales rivalry, like they hate us. Like, let's be honest, when we, when we play together, they love us. But when we play against each other, they hate us. They want everyone else to beat us. So it'll be, um, it'll be something special, I'm sure. That must be just requires so much character to to constantly just to scrape together the wins like they there's just something there in a team that's now also managed to do it twice um i mean they are up against a very stern challenge in you guys this week um but it i guess it also means that they have almost nothing to lose 100 percent time yeah. yeah and that's a dangerous place to be like for us in terms of they have nothing to lose. We know that they have that heart, that passion. And an extra little bit every time they play England is, is true. Everyone seems to raise their game. Um, and winning's a habit. Like, as soon as you start winning, like, you know what it feels like and you almost, like, crave it that little bit more and you just kind of get on a roll with it. So, yeah, they're going to be a dangerous outfit this weekend, I'm sure of it. They've been through a lot as well, haven't they, that team? Um, we spoke about a few of the teams that have been through a lot. But Wales have probably been through quite a bit. So, actually... To- not not necessarily come out the other side, but certainly they're they're getting that way and to start winning again is so important for a side that has really struggled to do that. Um and so yeah, confidence will be super high. Like you say, it'll feel a bit probably like a home game for them as much as it will for us. Um and yeah, a massive opportunity to take on an English side, which I don't think the Welsh need any more encouragement to get up for games like that, that's for sure. <laughs> No, I mean, you guys have 20 wins on the trot now. Um, there's, there's plenty of motivation. Who really impressed you uh, from Wales over the weekend? Who stood out? Oh, good question. Great question. Obviously, Sean Ed, when she came on, I think she ended up getting player of the match, didn't she? Yeah. Which, yeah. for a sub coming on, is hell of a feat. Um, I think Alicia Butchers just looks better and better every time she plays at the minute. Obviously, that little break down the short side, I think she was probably bossing that just a little faint to the outside, took on the front row, bless them, that had been on the pitch for, what was it, 76 minutes at the time, something like that, um, which is just brutal. And then obviously had the nous to pick up the inside player in Fionn Lewis. So I think I think she's just getting stronger and stronger every time she plays and such a good girl as well. So it's, it's awesome to see. Yeah, when you, when you watch them, you obviously want to see loads of jazz on the ball, don't you? But when we're playing against them, we probably really don't want to see much of that at all. So it, it would kind of be a bit split this weekend, I think. Yeah. <laughs> she was well marshaled by Rona Lloyd. Yeah, she was. It was a good battle. And then uh, France scoring that 40-5 to five win over Ireland. Uh, six tries. Much improved, I would say, probably um, from the previous week over Italy. Is that accurate? Yeah, I'd say so. Like, especially um, for me, it's just how they galvanise on that turnover ball. Like, they seem to just love it. They thrive on it. And Ireland, bless them, especially that first half, just struggled to maintain any possession, like whether it was knock-ons or handling errors or loose passes. And then France just seemed to to come to life off it, especially Sansu's. Like, she's a class at nine. Like, I love watching her play. Um, enjoy playing against her, but really enjoy her work and watching her play as well. So, they're definitely getting stronger and, and similarly, like they'll be getting more and more confidence as this tournament's going, especially some of the performances they put in. 
Yeah, we're, the game we're not talking about is going to be <laughs> really nice in Bayonne. Um, so th- tell me about the vibe in camp now, because now this is the third game, then there's the fallow week. <clears throat> and then mid said, it's on. Then selection becomes a little more, um, a, a stronger indication of, of what's to come. Yeah, probably. Um, obviously, we we actually haven't had selection out yet, so we don't quite know what this week will look like. But um, certainly from from what he said, it will be another opportunity to perhaps see people who haven't had as much game time or, you know, perhaps give people who deserve another shot another shot. Um, so, yeah, I think we're not quite sure what we'll see from selection, but certainly I think, and we've spoken about it loads, that the, the good thing we have at the moment is an unbelievable depth in our squad. So actually... What did we make? Is it 10 changes this week, I think, to 11, 11 changes yeah. from the Scotland side? And obviously the quality and the calibre of player and stuff it doesn't really take a backward step. So it's a great place to be in, I guess, as an England team. Um, makes their life a lot harder. That's why they earn the big bucks in order in terms of choosing the, the players and the, the team to go out for each game. But yeah, and then obviously after Wales, we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, I think they're... I think everybody's making it really, really hard for them to to pick who they who they want to play in those positions. Definitely, I think the players are in as much anticipation as the media for that <laughs> for the selection after the next round. Um, but yeah, no, just to echo guys like it is a great place to be to have that much strength and depth and to know that like anyone you put on the field is going to do the job. What's the most hotly contested area um, at the moment? Which is the kind of part of the field that you feel the competition is the tightest yeah i i would say probably make well all genuinely all of them i'm not just saying that genuinely all of them but probably back row and back three is really tough just because of the amount of quality you've got in those positions obviously there's there's certain ways that you can configure it as well in terms of where you play people um you know not everyone plays just in one position um because you think this weekend marley packer didn't even she wasn't even in the squad and she was standout player of the match the previous week and has been been all season hasn't she so just yeah things like that when you actually sit down and think about it too much a, a bit a bit scary I suppose but in a really really good way is the is the turnaround when when you have a shorter week because you do lose a day now um does that make the week harder or do they go kind of is it easier because you have one less heavy training day and everyone knows you can't overload we'll let we'll let you know in a few days <laughs> i'm not sure yeah well in theory we should we should back Easier. off a bit yeah because obviously you've got one less day to recover um so i think we're kind of mixing what would be normally two separate sessions into one on i don't even know what day it is on maybe wednesday um so that all kind of squeeze itself into one but yeah hopefully a little bit lighter Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, I mean, the old girls don't even have to do fitness after. <laughs> do you know what I, mean? I don't know what Emily's I'm... complaining about. <laughs> it's outrageous behaviour. I'm actually going to pull it up. I'm going to feed it into some group or something and just make sure that it's brought up. <laughs> hey, there's got to be perks somewhere along the ride, somewhere. <laughs> I think when you've um, 98 and 132 caps for your country, you have rights <laughs> to that. Like, I'm only joking. I think they, they've done their time with, with putting in the shift for this white shirt. So if they get off one fitness block, we'll let them be. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So King's Own, 16,000 seats. Um, what is the big difference? I mean, outside of the convenience for someone like me having to travel to Gloucester from London. <laughs> what is the big difference for you in playing in a small stadium like that that's packed to the rafters versus playing somewhere a little more cavernous with fewer people in there. You can go. Uh, it just it just feels different. It feels full. This is obviously quite a obvious thing to say. Um, but what are they sold? Eleven and a half thousand tickets. You said earlier yeah. potentially. So that that place will feel full, um, even though it might be a few shy. Whereas you put eleven thousand, say in a. 80 seat stadium for example and it feels nowhere near full um and it 
it's just a difference in noise in kind of closeness in all of that sort of stuff obviously the numbers are exactly the same but the feeling's completely different um i'm certainly a massive advocate for getting to stadiums that we can you know just uh, we're just short of their capacity so that there's still room to grow we don't want to be turning people away we don't want to be somewhere that's too small for us but if we can just get that that balance right which i think we're starting to do really nicely at the moment king's home probably hopefully will be a brilliant example of that but um yeah it's awesome and they're standalone games now as well sometimes we used to get you know those numbers once we played after the men whereas actually all of those people screaming and shouting making all that noise want to be there to watch those two sets of players going at it so again that's that's quite exciting i think and yeah awesome i think the other thing that i'm really excited about something like that singing the national anthem when you're at home in front of that many people the the national anthem you you can hear it like so often you sing the national anthem and all you can hear is my screechy voice and most tone deaf voice whereas you want to you want to hear everyone um so that's not really she's not tone deaf um that's that's what you want to hear um and i think that's that's like hairs on the on your arm stand up kind of vibe and i love that stuff i think also as well like it's just accessible to people like we're going around and the Red Roses have been to different places. So like Northampton, Exeter, I know they've played there a few times, Harlequins, obviously. And it's just, it's awesome that you'll get into these grounds like, and people are able to come. They will not necessarily be able to get to London, but we can get, we can take the game to them. And I think that's so important to grow the game. Like you look at the calibre of people that are coming to watch. So many are young girls. It's not like your old rugby guys that love rugby and come in. It's, it's like young girls that are genuinely being inspired by the people on the field and, for me, like, that's huge. I loved seeing that in Wales. Did you see all those girls who were there? So amazing. Super cute. Yeah. And, like, genuinely, though, like, they absolutely love it. Like, they want photos, they want, like, autographs. But I said it before, but for us, like, it means the world. So, like, keep coming, keep asking, because it means a lot to us as well to be able to give a little bit back to people that are genuinely, like, inspired by us and and want to be in our shoes in the future. I think it is so special. Someone wanted my socks at the weekend. I thought, you can have them, but I, I felt a bit embarrassed giving them my stinking <laughs> sweaty socks. You shouldn't have said this. Now <laughs> everyone's going to be asking for your socks after every game, knowing that they can get them. Well, Best you be taking some extra clean socks <laughs> with you. There we go. Have, a, have to have a half-time spray. <laughs> But that's the, the the stadium conversation is an interesting one because I never it's weird but it's kind of never occurred to me that all the England men's test matches are played at Twickenham. In South Africa the Springboks play in any of about six or seven different venues because they're all relatively big stadiums and it's a country that it's you know it's 14 hours drive between Cape Town and Joburg. Um it's insane. So they have to take the sport kind of around the country if you want different people in different parts to see it. England's a lot more contained, but it, it does make um, it more accessible to different communities and people who might be enticed to come since it's just down the road, but wouldn't necessarily travel three hours by train to London to come and watch. Um, 100%. So you are reaching a different rugby consumer there. You're really kind of the showpiece of the sport and you, you're going out there and, and bringing people in. Yeah, I think Mo said it's it's that accessibility piece. I think, you know, there's there's a definite has goes on about it all the time. There's a definite stereotype around an, a men's England supporter in terms of perhaps you know how they look and where they've come from and whatnot. So and and I think definitely we're different. Like you say, going to different places, um, traveling around the country. It's not kind of that public schoolboy persona that that sometimes the men's side have, um, which I think is awesome. And you do get a such a um, a range, array, nice word, mate. Array Ooh. of pe- people coming from all these sorts of places. She loves it when she does a good word. <laughs> loves it, um, which is which is awesome, and that's what we want. Like we don't want a game that's kind of cornered off to a certain type of person or a certain demographic. That's that's not what it's about. Are you a bit of a Wordle fan, Mo? Love. Have you tried? Um, oh, have you tried Quirdle and Octurdle? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> so, Wordle, exactly. but four is called Quirdle, Q-U-O-R-D-L-E. Okay. And Octurdle is eight. You're into it, don't, don't give I do that. a Quirdle, which is four. Octurdle is a bit much. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Alma, no, try, try, try. Octurdle. Try it 
Elma's a real grown up. She has real things to do. She's got a job. She's got a <laughs> husband arriving tomorrow, Elma. Yeah, Can we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. this? <laughs> enough, enough rugby. How exciting. I, <laughs> I was, She's gone giddy. I was, She's gone giddy. <laughs> I was literally walking around the house going, I'm going to have to share this house with someone now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See, you talk about us being roommates. That's different. <laughs> yeah, I've been living on my own for six months. So I literally, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to make some space here in the bathroom. I can't have all of this to myself anymore now. I'm so really, is this it? Is this the move? This, this is, is the move. Finally, yeah. So he's been covering um, golf season down in South Africa, Mo, in case you don't know. Um, and golf season in South Africa is kind of across the summer months um and uh he's starting a job here um soon so it was the, basically he was hanging on over there to see if he can get a u.s visa in time to go cover the masters and then the visa fell through um so now he gets to come here a week earlier um how I think exciting the, i think the cats might be more exciting <laughs> um, because they, two of them definitely prefer him over me the girl cats are team dad um I'm really excited about the fact that the variety of dinner options will now, <laughs> but like incrementally increase because <laughs> Elm is not the cook. Elm no, is not the cook. Left to my own devices, it's mainly carbs, cheese, and beer. Um, <laughs> that is outstanding. <laughs> That's why we get on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm uh, nutritionally, I'm going to probably start looking a little better. Um, uh, which which will also be brilliant. Have um, you cleared some wardrobe space, or are you like right? Well, that's your one drawer. Do as it is with you, please. I started because you guys are, a- you you're married. Like this is proper. This isn't just you know someone's moving in for the first time. But you've got used to being the only I, person in that. I place. hope he doesn't watch this. So he has <laughs> an insane number of pairs of shoes i mean like the shoe the sneaker uh, they are all sneakers they all do the same thing but there there's many of them um and he had to leave a lot of them back there um some of them are coming in the crate even on my <laughs> boat um so i i actually started building one of those build it like self-assembly cupboard wardrobes you haven't done that before have you <laughs> I built the thing halfway and then it fell over. It's a it's a disaster zone. So I have a half assembled wardrobe in there for him. He's gonna have to finish assembling it before he unpacks anything. Uh, but there is, I mean, all of the hardware is kind of basically there. So um, he's got a surprise waiting for him. <laughs> Little like, does he know. Technically, there is wardrobe space here. Well, there will be <laughs> as soon as we finish building this thing. Um, so just be glad that both of you have wardrobe space in your in your shared hotel room. My roommate has um, a rude awakening. Do you, do you have <laughs> enough wardrobe space? Well, what happens? So, <laughs> go on, you go. It's so very, earlier, very two-sided story. This it is a two-sided story. I'll give you mine. You can come, come as as you may. Um, so earlier, like we, like I said, we've got a routine. We've been now roomies for three weeks, four weeks, <laughs> in the same in the same room. Like, <laughs> so there's like a process. So I put my bed, um, my bag by the side of my bed, have a bit of hanging space, kind of take over like this side of the room, and then we got here earlier. And Scus was like. You got enough space, mate. And I was like, "What do you mean? This is this is the space I've always had." She was like, "Well, yeah, you can have three quarters of the room. I'll just have this quarter." And I was like, "But we've always done it like this." I was like, no, she's putting a lot of sass into that. <laughs> Basically, so in front of us right now, there's a table of which Mo has sole control. Then we go on to like a little hanging space with some drawers. Mo has the whole thing. Then there's the TV stand with a couple of shelves. Mo has the whole thing. Then there's a. A, a, a small thing it's about a third of the size of the table that we're on that's mine <laughs> so I appreciate that might be hard to visualise but essentially it's a quarter to a three quarters okay because this girl for how long are we here <laughs> two, two weeks. weeks brought what was it 13 casual t-shirts with her <laughs> I'm not very good at packing how I'm much really... <laughs> how much of the, I mean you wear kits so much of the time that you're in we're there. not even allowed out elmer so we're not we're not casualing 
We're casualing right now. Well, we are, are casualing you, right now. Are but... you you're casualing for, for me? But it's because Mo has such <laughs> a, um, a a very intense media schedule because she is part pundit, part player these days. Remember, is <laughs> it is it for TikTok? Do you need a variety of outfits to keep your TikTok posting up? For the fans, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not very good on TikTok. I'm really not very good at it. But you keep um, g- getting caught in TikToks. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I love it. I'm just not very good at the content side of it. Um, getting caught. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for making a fool of myself, you know that. No, I'm just really, really bad at packing. Like, I'm, I've always been horrendous at it and I always bring way too much. Like, my bag, <laughs> we've got a 20 kilogram limit. And when I put my bag on the scales earlier, it was 27 kilograms. And the lady on the desk gave me so much sass. And I was just like, four days we were there. Four days? (laughs) Did you take 27 kilograms to Italy? (laughs) (laughs) That's That's, what Elma emigrated with. That's how bad I am. I'm so bad. I don't even know how or why because I'm only little. But here we are. I don't think I have 27 kilograms of clothes with me in this house. (laughs) Oh. That is it impressive. Awful. I I I, th- I demand more variety on your Instagram. I definitely want to see those <laughs> outfits now. You're gonna have to start modeling them. Do one of those TikToks where you jump and then you change outfits every time. <laughs> or one of I those can do strap it now ones. If you just like a, scars. Like a slow mo <laughs> one, and then like every step you take, there's a new new outfit loaded. We'd love that. New hairdos with really... everyone as well. And there's only one hairdo. I just changed the <laughs> dishevelled bun. bun slightly each side. I think Skaz will really enjoy filming that. To be fair, so we'll get on that for you. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And um, next time, can we have the microphone, and then it can be karaoke and TikTok and all of the outfits all paraded in one go. Hundred percent. Maybe okay. I'll sing to you as I'm changing outfit. That could work. Yeah, or you could just be pretending that- to sing, and then you can just put the track <laughs> underneath it. And then more people might watch. You don't hear my voice? Yeah. (laughs) Shot. Great shot. Great shot. Wait, wait, wait. There was one thing I actually wanted to seriously talk about. And this came up in commentary so often this weekend um, that I felt like the fact that we haven't actually spoken about this uh, was me not actually doing my job very well. And that was that um, there was actually a line from Rachel Burford she said Mo fell out of love a bit with the game. Ooh. Is that true? Ooh. Is that true? Ooh. I don't think I fell out of love with the game. Um, no, I don't think I fell out of love with the game, just to clear that up. But I just, I was just in a bit of a hole, personally, I think, is probably the best way to describe it. So, um, you know, it gets like, like, I think lockdown hit me really hard. Um, being in the camp environment and not being able to like do what I love which is be around the girls like Skaz will allude to it but I'm a very social person like I, I really enjoy spending time with everyone in the team not just like certain people and when we were in camp previously it was like we were all on the mat and you couldn't go two meters closer to anyone else because it was real Covid time so like you were literally like stuck in your mat you were in rooms on your own um, and like just loads of restrictions on stuff and kind of the element that I really enjoyed was wasn't there anymore so then I just basically I I just was in a bit of a bad place I think um I think it was if I may speak on your behalf yeah. it, it wasn't falling out of love with the game because you still loved playing at Gloucester yeah it was just that international environment was was a really tough place to be someone of Mo's personality and whatnot and everything else that was perhaps going on at that time it was just something that yeah, yeah, was was something that maybe, uh, and it was completely the right decision, I think, for you to yeah. just have a bit of a break from it. Because look at her now. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for me is like I'd never want to be a drain on an environment. Like the type of person I am, like I'm always trying to be someone that's like a bit uplifting and stuff. And I really wasn't like in that time. And I've got a lot of close mates, like Scar, Santa Packer, to name a few. Like like friends for life, not just rugby friends and they were always looking out for me and looking after me in the environment. And yeah, I just, I was just sad. Like I just couldn't get myself out of the hole. And I think it was time to take a step back because I was being detrimental to everyone rather than bringing the energy and doing what I normally do. And that was kind of like the biggest reason. And and like, it's such a hard decision because yeah, you're right. Like I've never fallen out of rugby. I love rugby. I always have like 
the reason I've stayed in it, commentated in it, coached in it is because I love the game. Um, but at that time, I just think I needed a little step back. And yeah, like Scott said, it's the best thing. It's the best thing I could have done. Like coming back in, I think everyone's seen it. Everyone's alluded to it. And yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm but back. I- <laughs> that's brilliant I love that but I do think that there are people who so and I mean my husband's a complete introvert so lockdown was his favorite thing like he absolutely he, it was literally he said I've never been happier because we don't have to go anywhere or see anyone we can just be at home and we don't even have to he's like I don't even have to think of an excuse of why I don't want to see people literally no one is going to come here and I'm obviously on the other end of the spectrum. I love being, I, I, I hate working from home. I go to work because I just want to be among people. Like that's my favorite thing. So when I was in the Springbok bubble for the Lions tour, I was in COVID isolation for 11 days. I started crying on day three. Now that COVID isolation meant I never left the room, like not for anything, not at any point just stayed in a room that had, it didn't even have a window. It was one of those hotels with just like the glass panel. And I started crying on day three and I cried every day until I left that room because I'm not one of those people who d- does well in that kind of really socially isolated. I mean, I was talking to people all day, every day, but it's just not the same when you're not, um, when you're the kind of person who really feeds off other people's energy um, and you are just completely out of your I feel like almost out of your comfort zone, but also out of your natural habitat, like the way you relate to people and how you exist in the world. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think it's also like a super difficult one to like make decisions like that. Like so often in life, like people just go through with what's the normal, what you should be perceived to be doing. What you've always done. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, it, it was like it was really crushing like having to tell the girls and speak to coaches and stuff and make that call but even mid said when we had that first initial call like he was like no like I completely get it like we've seen it in you as well and I think it's it's a brave thing to do isn't it like and like you said it's affected so many people in so many different ways and I don't think we'll ever really see that until like the next few years and how they un- unravel and unfold especially for the younger generation but yeah I just hope that everyone's okay and everyone keeps talking and people can get back out and spend time with people if that's what they enjoy doing and your husband's still allowed to just stay home if that's what he wants <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I love that I love that there's space for someone like of your profile to say I wasn't in a happy place and then I took it upon myself to change whatever whatever was required but to kind of go I'm going to remove myself out of this now because I don't feel like I'm being the person I want to be in this space Um, And that's that's really beautiful, but it also does take a lot of courage to go, I'm taking responsibility for this on me. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough, wasn't it? Yeah, Yeah. it was a very, it was a brave thing for her to do because, as you say, it's, without being too dramatic, it's kind of all you've ever known. It's always what you've done. It means so much to you. But we, obviously, Mo and I have been friends for a long time. We always have a little saying where we're like, nothing changes if nothing changes. So something had to change um and it it's tough it doesn't mean that it's easy but now look at her now look at her she's just come off the back of a player of the match performance in the six nations she's back in an england shirt she's charging around she's pretending to be funny again it's just <laughs> chaos you can't stop her i love yeah, that genuinely as well like it's almost written in the stars like everything that's happened in that time as well like i've got a job i love um like just so many things that have just kind of aligned and obviously like the work that I've managed to do with the media, like having that opportunity with sevens, which is genuinely some of my like most enjoyable rugby that I've played. Like everything's kind of like for, like fitted into place for me. And I've always been a massive believer that everything happens for a reason. And I think this is like the biggest thing that's happened that I'm like, yeah, like I get it. Like it was the right thing to do. And coming back in now like I genuinely couldn't be happier like I absolutely love being around the girls like I'm loving the training I'm really enjoying throwing the ball around like being back with everyone is just incredible and I think it's almost cemented even more the fact that that was the right decision for me in that moment Power and hopefully team. all the girls see that as well yeah <laughs> well we could see it on tv I mean I didn't even have to be in Parma to see that you were playing like someone took the leash off I mean it was just like <laughs> absolutely brilliant to see the level of energy and enjoyment that you clearly got from it and you were just it seemed like you were completely in the zone oh 100 percent. yeah 
I think like yeah it's just I just feel free like I genuinely just feel like weights off like just running around playing rugby and enjoying it with a smile um like granddad's always said you know so yeah it's good and you've got the the Nick and Mo show we I mean we we spoke about it a little earlier um but the TikTok women's six nations creating space for current players who are kind of within the setups to to kind of really talk about and I love that you guys carried um such a variety of different voices people from all over um Rachel Malcolm's uh post match uh comments got a replay which is I mean she is just I love the level of emotion that she brought to it people stigmatize women who cry um sometimes in professional contexts it's seen as like oh that's not professional behavior um and I felt like it was just undeniable, the level of kind of energy that just came off her in that post-match conversation. It felt so honest and so raw. Yeah, she's a real passion, like passionate leader. Like she just seems to exuberate at everything she does. Like even when we played them, um, obviously Water Girl, I was on the side of the pitch. I think it was the 79th minute and someone got a turnover, a jackal turnover, and she literally cheered it like I've never seen. And I was like, that's incredible. I said to her after the match and she was like, I asked them to fight till 80, so I had to go for it because they're fighting till 80. They've got a turnover in the 79th minute. Like, that's amazing for me because that's all of us. And, like, you just want people like that in the sport. I think she's a fantastic leader. She's actually texted me since the show to have a go at me about talking about her so much. <laughs> she was going redder and redder and cringing, especially when Andy came on and did the interview as well. And I was like, mate, but you're great. Like, people just love it. I was like, embrace it. But... Yeah, she's um she's a very humble humble girl and, and a great person to be around. So, well, you know, you lightning teammates. Yeah, she's a good egg. Brilliant, love that. Okay, well, uh, you can see Rachel in action this weekend against France. Stern test uh, for Scotland, uh, Ireland hosting Italy, which should be a really good one to to tune in for. And England against Wales at King's Island Stadium. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that, um, uh, Emily, you, you feel like you get a little more space in the room now that you've washed your dirty laundry in public. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, it might mean I get less. It might mean I get less. <laughs> we'll, we'll check in with more um, uh, dirty laundry, literal and uh, figurative, uh, next time on The Good, The Scars and The Rugby. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this week, this show is produced by Shara Kilgallen, researched by Jenna Claridge. Uh, the Good, The Scars and The Rugby is a Folding Pocket production. 